If this is your first time watching this channel, you're probably wondering, who exactly is this person? Hello, I am a journalist, I am a blogger, and I am a business development consultant. But my recent goal with this brand that I started back in 2020 called Leading Like a Lady is to encourage and empower Black and African women to share themselves more authentically and unabashedly in both their personal and professional lives. And one way that I'm particularly excited about doing this is to help Black and African women tell their stories in a compelling way through writing. If you're someone who's looking to improve your writing skills, who's looking to write a book or build a career out of telling stories, then this is the video for you. I am a writer. I've been writing, I mean, since I was, I don't know, three years old. I have a lot of insights to give about how I was able to get my story out through my TED talk, through uh, featured articles that I've written in major publications, and also in growing my personal blog, Leading Like a Lady. So for this International Women's Month, my goal is to walk you through four different types of approaches to writing that famous African and Black writers have used to bring outside readers into the everyday lives and thoughts and experiences of Black and African women across the diaspora. I'm starting the series by talking about writing Black women's pain, and in every mirror she's Black, I think does a near perfect job at it. We'll talk about the rubric that I used to measure that later on, but there are gonna be three main literary devices she uses to steer away from the stereotypes that people complain about when they're reading stories that don't seem authentic about the Black women's experience. On her dedication page, the author says that the book is to anyone who felt unappreciated, uninvited, or invisible. Your voice is more powerful than you think. You are allowed to exist without explanation. Never let the world convince you that your struggles are invalid. And I thought it would be interesting to compare this with a quote from one of my favorite authors, Zora Neale Hurston whose philosophy on writing about Black women's pain was to not make it seem so awful or more catastrophic than any other woman who isn't Black. Zora seemed to think it more important to show Black women finding ways to live their best lives in spite of their circumstances or discrimination against them. So the question of the day is, how do we write stories on Black women's pain that are genuine but not excessive, that's accurate but not voyeuristic? And if we choose to write about Black women's pain, what should be the goal or purpose behind it? And lastly, did Lola's book succeed in answering any of these questions well? So the first literary device is characterization. I think this is really crucial because she takes three different aspects of what might be put into one Black woman and makes them three distinct characters, basically trying to do away with the myth that all Black women are a monolith. By making three distinct characters going through three different experiences, you also get to dive really deep into what in real life makes women pursue specific types of lifestyles. And these are discussion points that are all over the internet with Black women, like hypergamy, being an immigrant versus being a Black person in outside any country outside of Africa and being part of the working poor and being rendered invisible by your peers and the rest of society. Another literary device that the author Lola Akimade Akestrup uses very well is juxtaposition and she uses it brilliantly to show the different ways each character navigates their blackness based on their identity and the choices that they make in their lives and that other people in their lives make that affects them. Putting these three characters against each other and seeing how they brush up against each other, we're able to have a nuanced conversation about what these three philosophies tell us about what Black women are trying to achieve or overcome. There are numerous debates online, whether it be on YouTube or Twitter that can be either surface level or accusatory most of the time when it comes to how black women deal with these three issues of pursuing the soft life, of searching for your identity or meaning when you're the token black woman, whether it's in your regular job or a large corporate space, and also being invisible, not feeling seen. And with these character arcs in the book, I think Lola seems less concerned with proving a point, i.e. saying who's right and who's wrong in this debate, and instead wants us to examine what parts of black women's pain can come from different aspects, can come from personal mistakes, can come from social, social circumstances, and also larger systemic issues. She doesn't put the blame entirely on one thing, and she therefore shows that 
black women are complex individuals. We're not stereotypes. We're not archetypes. With these three categories of life experiences, she also shows where and how this is sometimes unique to the black woman, but also a showing how these issues are universal and that anyone who's reading the book, whether you're a black woman or not, should be able to empathize with it, which is profound. Hyperbole can be a tricky device to use, especially when it forces readers to suspend disbelief in a storyline that's supposed to mimic real life issues. Lola is a bit careful in using this with her character Brittany because Brittany does have a spiritual tug of war over the choices she makes, like marrying a white man she barely knows who's the heir to a Swedish fortune. And I'm glad that the author uses the character of Kemi to show the contrast of shipping with someone based on love versus how they could elevate your socioeconomic status. Yunus is the most tragic character and represents the extreme consequences of coping with pain. Her story is hyperbolic only in the sense that not everyone's story will end like hers, but the jarring conclusion to her story is hopefully useful in making readers more conscious about looking out for the quiet, isolated woman in their social group or in their communities because they are most at risk for the worst mental health outcomes like and physical abuse and exploitation. I'm reading this book by another Black author named Zadie Smith called Changing My Mind, which is a series of essays. And in one of these essays, she talks about Zora Neale Hurston's approach to writing on Black women and why that appealed to her more than the usual. And Zadie says that she feels there's a new fetishization where Black female protagonists are mostly strong and soulful. And so in her opinion, it's important to see Black women navigate their pain unsuccessfully sometimes to humanize them even at the risk of them looking like the villain. Which I think in every mirror she's black achieves because Brittany, the hypergamy character, is not totally absolved from her poor choices, but is also still experiencing ex existential stress and doubt before diving into a tumultuous relationship with Johnny, and even gets a lot of real feedback and criticism from her close friends and family about her choices. If you juxtapose Brittany with the character of Kemi, who is successful in her own right, it looks like she is doing the right thing by you know, being a self-made woman and being independent and simply looking for anyone willing to meet her emotional and sexual needs, despite how much money they make or what social status they have. But even Kemi finds herself in almost a similar quagmire as Brittany later on in the book that shows that even she can fall victim sometimes to the poor choices or temptations that a uh, black woman or any woman faces when dealing with a toxic work environment and just a toxic society in general. So in summary, I think In Every Mirror She's Black does a great job of giving a comprehensive overview of the Black woman's experience with pain. And I think she does it in a way that Zadie Smith calls romantic yet rigorous. Zadie Smith used those words to describe Zora Neale Hurston and why she was attracted to her as a writer. And even though I brought up that quote about Zora Neale Hurston wanting to talk about Black women experiencing luxury and being above it all, regardless of what's going on in their lives, the approach that In Every Mirror she's black takes to show that while we do want to aspire for the luxurious things and the soft life and um, want to be known more for our adventures and um, enjoyment of living versus our struggles of living it's important to show both the romantic and rigorous sides of it all and in doing so and this is another quote from zaddie smith that i really appreciated from her essay in doing so it humanizes us one thing she mentioned in her book, Zadie Smith, is that with white writers, they automatically presume that everything about them, their joys, their highs, their lows, their um, struggles, it's all taken for granted to be a part of the human experience. And so they see themselves as the default in everything. And she says, describes it as seeing themselves on the highest existential level. What happens with black women writers in Zadie Smith's opinion, and also my opinion as well, is that when we write about our own pain, it is either one, pathologized, or two, written off as a very unique or niche kind of experience that no one else can relate to. And 
to answer my second question of the day for this video, if the purpose of writing about Black women's pain is to, to see us as human beings and not as others, then we need to write, in a, uh, write about our pain in a way that shows us as just ordinary humans that can be filled with both the bad and the good. And in doing so, that doesn't say that we are not definitely victims and there are systemic their participation in systemic issues and discrimination does isolate us more so than maybe other groups. But by humanizing us, they don't relegate our stories to just being for a Black audience or for a Black female audience. So the emphasis is on using our stories as case studies on humanity, not blueprints for the entire Black woman experience globally. Black women as gold diggers should not be a concept. Instead, Black women in hypergamy can be a representation of the larger idea of survival. The strong, independent Black woman is not a concept. Instead, Black women and also immigrants to fight their way through corporate ladders and other hierarchies are a representation of a larger idea of vulnerability. And the poor African woman does not equal a charity case. She provides a deeper examination of the quality and state of being a human being. If you're a writer or an aspiring writer, leave a comment below and tell me what story are you writing? And how does it give a different perspective on how and why Black women experience pain? Also, let me know if you're writing it for a book, for a newspaper article, or a blog. Don't forget to like this video, and also please subscribe if you enjoy this content and would like to see more on this channel.